hope everybody of you is still awake. I would invite you actually to close your eyes right now. I want to take you on a little journey, have a little break, but still listen, and feel the emotions. Eyes closed, perfect. My story is about a family, a family of a mother, a father, and two boys. One day, the father was walking down the street with three friends behind him, and he was run down by a totally drunken driver who was 20 years of age. After that accident, the father was hospitalized in intensive care for almost 12 months, almost a year. After that period, he got out into a physical rehabilitation facility, and there he died after just three days. You may open your eyes right now. So, you may have already guessed it, the little boy or the family I was talking about is the family up there in the picture, and the little boy there is me. So for me, that was the first hard lesson in my life that your actions have real-life consequences. As a direct consequence of this accident, not only my father died after one year in intensive care, but also four other people died or took their lives. But you can also turn things around. Even if life sucks and it hands you a bad deck of cards, you can't do something with it, if you can reframe the things that happen to you. And that's what I did for the past 17 years as an entrepreneur. I founded my first company at the age of 16, and I founded more than 20 companies in the past 17 years. And I recently wrote a book about that called 101 Life Principles. And today I'm going to talk to you about a topic that's very near to my heart, Getting comfortable with discomfort. Because for me personally, that's a solution to many things. And I will also teach you and give you some tools how to do that. So normally, we try to avoid discomfort at all costs, right? It's only human. But when Corona hit in 2020, in March, You hadn't have a choice. You had to take it as it comes. And my luck was, I've been an entrepreneur for 13 years already, and I have learned to get comfortable with discomfort and to see crisis as an opportunity. And that's somehow what I want you to learn and what I want you to take away from this talk today. Stop keeping standing in line of your own life and start taking matters into your own hands. So, for example, if you've been putting off the talk with your employer or the talk with your spouse, some hard talk for days or weeks on end or already, think about it like an opportunity. Think about it that you can grow with that. You will come out on the other side stronger. So often in life, we do not take the right action because we are afraid, right? We are afraid that we would have more to lose than we could possibly gain. So how do we, do we teach ourselves to take action, to react with a can-do attitude, instead of being paralyzed by your own fears. I want you to look at your ability to cope with hardships like a muscle. You see here a photo from me in the gym. Why am I showing you this? In order to grow your muscle, you have to add load, right? If you want to grow your muscles, you constantly add weights in the gym in little increments, right? 
and you can translate that to the things you feel discomfort with, with the things you are uncomfortable with in your daily life. I call them micro-sucks. So we have to train our tenacity muscle so we get comfortable with the little sucks, and once we are comfortable with the little sucks in life, next time they will be easier for us. You will get through on the other side, and then you can tackle the bigger ones next time. So get out of your comfort zone, little by little, just a little bit every day, like me jumping out of an airplane. It was actually a middle suck, not a micro suck. Because when you broaden your comfort zone, when you expand your comfort zone, things will get easier, you will have more opportunity in life, and your life as such will grow, it will get bigger. But why don't we do that? I hope some of you already do, or most of you already do. But sometimes we're kind of standing in line of our own lives, pressing the snooze button on our life, putting it on hold, because oftentimes we think tomorrow it will be easier. And tomorrow I will feel like it. But the truth is, you will never feel like it. Never, ever. And the sooner you get comfortable with that, and the sooner you know you're never going to be, you're never going to feel like it, not even tomorrow or the day after, the sooner you can act. Actually, that photo is of me right after breaking my shin bone uh, three months ago, and uh, after a marathon. And trust me, I didn't feel like it. <laughs> I didn't feel like doing a marathon, never ever, and again. Uh, but right after that, of course, the next day, I, I already got my thoughts into action and started physical th therapy very soon again. And yeah, I'm training for the next marathon already. So let's dig a little deeper here. Why are we afraid to take action sometimes? Or why are we uncomfortable with situations, with the hard stuff in life in the first place? Two things. Failure. We don't want to fail, right? And rejection. We have been culturally indoctrinated to see failure and rejection and shame as embarrassment. We are embarrassed if we fail, at least most of the times. There's actually an event series called the Fuck Up Nights. When you spell it out, it's actually fun. And what they do is they present you with people from everyday situations and also with entrepreneurs who talk about their greatest failures in life. And their motto is, Sometimes you win, but sometimes you learn. And I want you to adopt this attitude, this motto to your life. See the hard situations as an opportunity to grow. Because one thing is clear, the only way to avoid failure is never to do anything with our lives, right? So I hope you agree with me on an intellectual level here, that if you start doing the little things that are a little uncomfortable, and but time, time passes, you do a little thing that's uncomfortable, the next time it's not so uncomfortable, and sometimes it's even comfortable in the future. But what if you're not quite there yet? What if you say, okay, Tom, I agree with you on an intellectual basis, but how can I do it? I'm not ready to take action. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. <laughs> but we heard already that that doesn't work out. It's actually a technique 
I'm using right now on stage. When you want to get ahead in life, you sometimes have to adapt your future you, your future personality. You have to grow and maybe also leave your old personality behind and leave your negative thoughts and negative emotions that often come with it behind. And in order to do that, you have to act. You have to take action, but also act like an actor. This on the screen is my business me and my old musician me as a drummer behind my drum set. So I've adopted a new personality over the years. It's not something that happens overnight, of course. It's the same with discipline, for example. Nobody ever woke up overnight being a disciplined person. You also have to train for it in some way, and when you gain experience with it, you are more and more disciplined. Nobody would expect waking up looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger the first time after the first training, right? So earlier this year, when I started running, actually, I started running at, in January for the first time in my life, so around uh, nine months ago. And what I did is, and believe me, I hated running. I hate all things cardio, actually. Um, but I set it as a goal for certain reasons. And what I did, I imagined what would a runner do? What would a runner eat? What would a runner wear? What would be the routine of a runner? But would they train in the morning or in the evening? And then I did it. So what we want to adapt is actually the thinking of, I am a runner. It's also, in, in some way, maybe uh, some one of you ever struggled with quitting smoking. You want to adapt the thoughts of, I am a non-smoker. You want to adapt your new personality and not think of you as a smoker who wants to quit, but you of you as a non-smoker. So what I want you to do is actively seek out the little uncomfortable things in your life. Things that you can still handle, but are also still a little uncomfortable. On purpose. Because, you already know, also tomorrow, you're not going to feel like it, so do it anyway. And reframe the failure as an opportunity. As an opportunity to grow and act. Act as an actor and impersonate your future you as long as you get there. And what I want you to do now is pick one thing, one thought. You've been putting off for some time, or one thing you've been afraid can be the talk to your spouse, to your employer, to a friend you've been not in contact with for quite some time, or it can be even be a little micro suck like cleaning the kitchen or cleaning your house up. And the next time it comes around, just do it. Thank you very much.